The combination of exasimil, lenalidomide and dexamethasone is a highly effective combination that has been studied in relapse setting as well as in the newly diagnosed setting. The combination of exasimil, lenalidomide, dexamethasone is currently approved uh, for relapsed myeloma among patients who have received one to three prior lines of therapy. It is a, a effective combination which also has the added advantage of being a completely oral combination. We know that a combination of a proteasome inhibitor with an immunomodulatory drug is one of the most effective combinations we have currently available uh, for treating patients with myeloma. For the first time, we actually have the ability to provide this combination in a completely oral fashion. And I think that is the distinct advantage uh, with Ixazomib uh, compared to the other proteasome inhibitors that we currently have in the clinic. The combination has been shown to be effective across all age groups. Um, in all patients with relapsed disease who are not refractory to um, bortezomib, uh, the combination clearly has been shown to improve the progression-free survival and should be a choice um, when you think about the different choices that we have currently for treating patients with relapsed myeloma. This is particularly relevant for patients who have responded favorably to the initial combinations that may have included a proteasome inhibitor and an immunomodulatory drug, uh, many of whom may have received it for a short duration of time prior to going to a stem cell transplant. So we know in those patients that particular combination is highly effective and now we have the ability to do that in a much more convenient fashion. Now there is no reason to choose that regimen. Um, particularly in a more fit patients or a less fit patients, we know from the phase three trial, it's very well tolerated across the board. It is particularly um, relevant for the older patients because it is more difficult for those patients to often come to the clinic um, to get injections on a weekly basis. So in those settings, we, the, the all oral combinations certainly have a distinct advantage. The key things that one needs to keep in mind when you are using the uh, exasmine lenalidom and dexamethasone is obviously the management of the toxicity. Um, so understanding which of the toxicities can be related to which drug uh, will allow the practitioners to better dose modify so that we can actually decrease the risk of toxicity. The second part is monitoring for the efficacy. Obviously it's a quite efficacious regimen, um, so careful monitoring uh, for the disease response is important because obviously there are some patients who don't respond or respond suboptimally, and in those patients, it will be important to uh, change uh, treatments. The one of the advantages of the all oral regimen is the fact that we can, you know, it's convenient for patients not having to come back very often, but at the same time, it also brings up the question of adherence to therapy, and that is something that um, physicians have to keep in mind uh, to ensure that people are taking the medications as they are instructed to. And it sometimes can be more challenging when a drug is taken once a week instead of every day. Because every day people, it's easier to remember. And when it's once a week, um, there's um, more chances of either missing a dose or taking more than what is prescribed on a given week. So it's important for uh, the nursing staff and other um, uh, allied health staff uh, who support the practice to maybe proactively reach out to the patients and make sure they're taking it. In the, in, in the way it was prescribed. There are several tools and reminder mechanisms that are being um, uh, thought about uh, or have been implemented, which can also make sure the patients actually stay on schedule. So the question is uh, how to select patients uh, for treatment with uh, exaxomy preftex. Uh, I think that's an easy question because you can actually enroll patients with, uh, with, uh, who are very fit, uh, who have cytogenetic high-risk features, even patients uh, with neuropathy, patients uh, with uh, slight uh, renal impairment. Um, I don't think there's a, 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 a patients tolerate or also show good uh, hematological tolerance to this combination. Um, there's little risk for infections and, um, and you can enroll younger and elderly uh, patients. So I think the indication or well, the, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a combination uh, for every season, I must say. But I would uh, carefully consider what was the previous treatment and uh, what was the response um, to the previous treatment, what was the patient's tolerance to the previous treatment. 
So that is important to make your best choice. I, I always say these are four pillars. Number one, the patient's situation. Is he fit? Is he frail? Has he, com he or she comorbidities? Number two, how did he react to the previous treatment? Did he achieve an excellent response? Did he tolerate the response? And was uh, the uh, treatment response maintained for long? And uh, of course, uh, another important question is, which options are available in, in your center, in your private practice? What, uh, what choices are available for you? And then uh, number four, uh, patients' preferences. Many patients uh, opt, of course, for an oral therapy and don't want to come to the hospital or to the private office uh, too often. So these are the determinants, or the, the basics where you, where you base your decision on in, in cooperation with your patient. And uh, nowadays it's easier to find a good solution for each individual patient. My personal experience with uh, Ixaxomib and X uh, is we participated in the Tumalin study, of course, and uh, we were surprised because we can, couldn't figure out uh, who is in the control group and who is in the uh, treatment group because it's so well tolerated. We now run a trial with Ixaxomib, Talidomide, uh, Dexamethasone, and when I look at uh, uh, toxicity data, I'm surprised uh, that uh, there is so little toxicity. The only toxicity comes a little bit from uh, in few patients uh, from thalidomide, but it's also well tolerated. And sometimes one wonders whether a proteasome inhibitor um, uh, negates a little bit or mitigates the uh, the uh, uh, neuropathic activity of thalidomide. But I don't know that. But it's very little, so it's very well tolerated. Um, uh, sometimes you think you. Sometimes you feel you want to, to even um, increase the dose, but we have to stick to the label. But I think that is worth con uh, following in, in further studies um, because of its uh, excellent tolerance. And uh, you can go with this treatment for very long uh, periods. So, and um, uh, we also participated in the uh, a tourmaline uh, study uh, using Ixaxomib as a maintenance therapy after stem cell transplantation and again there's nothing, there's no, there's practically no side effect. My colleagues working in, in private practice um, are very interested in, in of course maintaining uh, the quality of life of their patients and uh, um, also providing the patients a treatment which is well tolerated because that makes uh, uh, patient's life easier, but also physician's life easier. So you don't have to intervene so often and so on. So for both uh, parts, uh, uh, it is, uh, for both sides, it's an excellent uh, choice. And I think um, clinical experience will uh, um, uh, confirm this. And uh, I haven't heard any negative, I must say, any negative, um, let's say, data uh, or uh, any unusual toxicities up to now. But we have to be careful because sometimes you see toxicities only after a very long time. But it's very unlikely in my opinion. My personal experience with Ixasomib in combination with the lanalidomide and dexamethasone is uh, good. First, uh, my experience was uh, coming from the clinical trials in which uh, I have included uh, some patients in relapse and refractory, and uh, the experience was good. And now I am using exasomib in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone in some patients outside clinical trials. The efficacy is uh, good, and I would say that uh, almost all patients responded to IRD and the overall response rate is over 85 and 90%. In addition, approximately 12-15% of the patients are able to achieve a complete response. But what is important is that the administration of this three drug based combination is able to prolong the progression free survival in comparison with the conventional standard of care that we used in the past, lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And what is much more relevant is that the addition of the third drug, in this case, Ixasomib, 
is not associated with a high toxicity. The toxicity profile is uh, excellent and uh, we have to be careful at the beginning to evaluate the toxicity profile in terms of hematological toxicity, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, fatigue or even skin rust that is present in some patients. But if we have a careful at the beginning during the first two or three cycles, I would say that the patients can continue therapy for prolonged period of time without any problems. And in addition, as the combination is of all our administration, the convenience is great and patients have to come to the hospital just once per month.